Hello fellow manga readers and welcome to the first part of February's Manga Hole. Now you might ask, why is it divided into two parts? Well, I actually ended up buying more than I thought I would. So I ended up buying 90 volumes this month. From the last video up till now. If this would be one part, the video would be longer than an hour. Now I wouldn't want to do that to you guys. So I thought it would be better to divide it up to two videos so you can watch the video without falling asleep. When this video gets 50 likes, I'm going to upload part 2. Now you might also say, if this series is monthly, then why are you uploading this two weeks after you uploaded part 1? Well, I'm out of money anyway, might as well upload it now. Anyway, grab your snacks and drinks and let's get right into the video. Now last month actually was supposed to have more manga in the video. However, the shipments got delayed. So I'll start with some shipments which were supposed to come in last month. I'm going to start with a series which I'm actually reading right now, which is Monster Volume 8 and Volume 9. Now I'm actually just about to start Volume 8 as I've read up to Volume 7 and it's an amazing detective story. Like, if you like your detective stories, your CIA kind of stories, this is it, all right? This is amazing. And fun fact, if you actually lay the covers adjacent to each other like this, like all nine, they will actually form a picture. So if you would grab volume seven right now, you see, it lines up. So this all forms a picture. Another fun fact, uh, these are actually two in one, so which makes it cheaper. It's a fun fact for your wallet, I suppose. And another fun fact, these pictures actually um, are things that's going to happen inside of the manga. So, these might be spoilers for you. I'm sorry. Anyway, um, enough rambling. Let's get to the synopsis of Monster, if you haven't heard of it already. Dr. Kenzo Tenma is a renowned brain surgeon of Japanese descent working in Europe. Highly lauded by his peers as one of the great young minds that will revolutionize the field, he is blessed with a beautiful fiance and is on the cusp of a big promotion in the hospital he works at. But all of that is about to change with the grave dilemma that Kenzo faces one night. Whether to save the life of a small boy or that of the town's mayor. Despite being pressured by his superiors to perform surgery on the mayor, his morals force him to perform the surgery on the other critical patient, saving his life and forfeiting the mayor's. A doctor is taught to believe that all life is equal. However, when a series of murders occur in this surgeon's vicinity, all of the evidence pointing to the boy he saved, Kenzo's beliefs are shaken. Along his journey to unravel the true identity of his little patient, Kenzo discovers that the fate of the world might be intertwined with the mysterious child. Now this might actually be one of my all-time favorite mangas that I've read so far. It is so good. It is so good. All these plot twists, it all just forms one big picture. It's, at the start you might not understand everything, but everything will... All the puzzle pieces will fit together somehow. It will get explained somehow, you know what I'm saying? So I would very much recommend this series to anyone. You really need your attention with this series, because if you are not paying attention, you will not understand the series whatsoever. But to anyone else, I would very much recommend this. It's amazing. So here is the front. Here is the spine by Naoki Urasawa. This is actually in fact the first book I've read from Naoki Urasawa. I also have Pluto Complete and 20th Century Boys, which is behind this book, 1 till 5, which I haven't read just yet. And uh, yeah, I love his art. It looks beautiful. It even has some colored pages inside. By the looks of it, this volume doesn't even have any colored pages, but Normally, the volumes have colored pages, so uh, yeah, not all of them of course, some colored pages. So uh, yeah, I would very much recommend it. Let's get on to the second series, which actually was supposed to get delivered last month. Which is The Flowers of Evil by Shuzo Oshimi. Complete edition, volume 2, 3 and 4. Here we go. Uh, now, these might look quite thick to you, 
as you can see. It's quite a quick read because of the... Um, there's not that much text in it. There's a lot of images, a lot of panels. Uh, and not a whole lot of text, which makes it fun to read as well. I really like it. I actually already finished this series. As I got it in a few weeks ago, actually just after the manga hole, which is uh, kind of disappointing. But uh, yeah, the series itself, I really like it. It's a very interesting story. The spines also look really nice. Look at that. Let's get to the synopsis. Takao Kasuga is an unsociable middle school student who bears a love for books. In particular, Charles Baudelaire's Les Fleurs du Mal. He also has a crush on his class's idol, the sweet Nanako Saiki. In stark contrast to her, Sawa Nakamura is an insolent and unpleasant girl who lacks any concern for school. One day, Takao forgets, Takao forgets to bring his book home with him, returns to school to retrieve it, but is stopped in his tracks when he finds Nanako's freshly worn gym clothes lying on the floor. A strange desire consumes Takao and like a wicked pervert, he steals them. Akunohana is a compelling coming of age story centered around Takao's thoughts, feelings and relationships as he tries to live a normal life with the guilt of his crime weighing on him. Sawa, however, who witnessed Takao's thievery, has other plans in store for him. So, pretty much, it's a story about blackmailing. And it's a very interesting one at that. So, I would very much recommend you to read it. It's four volumes, four complete editions, and then... Uh, and that's it, so it's not that expensive either. So that's it for Shizu Oshimi's Flowers of Evil. And let's get to a book which has actually been recommended to me, Junji Ito's No Longer Human. This manga actually originally was two volumes uh, and it has been out of print for quite some time. So when they decided to reprint it, I immediately jumped on it because I think it looks awesome and I really wanted some of Junji Ito's books, because this is actually my first book by him. So here it is, No Longer Human. It's actually a hard cover with a soft cover behind, uh, around it. So let me show you. I think it looks way better without the soft cover, to be honest. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I think it's beautiful. There you go. So there it is. And let me tell you the synopsis, which is short but sweet. All by Yozo is a troubled soul incapable of revealing his true self to others. A weak constitution and the lingering trauma from some abuse administered by a relative force him to uphold a facade of hollow jocularity since high school. And that's pretty short. And uh, here is how it looks on the inside. Oh god. Well, it is Junjito after all, the master of horror. So, I'm uh, really looking forward to reading this, to uh, read this uh, first book I have from Junjito. So I'll get started on that soon. So that's it for No Longer Human, let's get to the next book, which is The Quintessential Quintuplets, Volume 1. Now this delivery was actually two weeks late, so, uh, here it is, anyway. <laughs> I've heard great things about this. Uh, here's his spine. Here's the back. And, uh, yeah, I don't know anything about it yet. Here's the inside of the quintessential quintuplets. I think it looks pretty nice. Pretty nice. Uh, but I heard it's a really nice... Really nice uh, manga. So let's read the synopsis. Consider the genius, high schooler Futaro Uesagi excels at studying and obtains a perfect score on every test. Due to his intense focus on that regard, he's a reclusive person with no friends. Additionally, he lives in a tight financial state as a result of family debts. Futaro's mundane lifestyle is interrupted when Itsuki Na Nakano a transfer student contests him for his usual lunch seat. After a short altercation, Futaro emerges victorious by insulting Itsuki's eating habits, which angers her enough to leave. However, when Futaro learns that he has been offered the private tutor position of a wealthy family's academically hopeless daughters, 
he immediately regrets his prior encounter. Turns out that the beneficiaries of his tutoring are none other than Itsuki and her four identical siblings. The shy Miku, the cheerful Yotsuba, the devious Nino and the mature Ichika. Teaching these quintuplets may prove more difficult for Futuro than he initially expected as the last thing they want to do is seriously study. Now Futuro must face the various challenges of tutoring five beautiful yet eccentric girls. So that was it for the late shipments from last month. Let's get to the new manga that I picked up this month. Starting with Blade of the Immortal Omnibus Volume 5. Now I actually have bought Volume 1 up till 4, the Omnibuses, um, which you might be able to see here at the bottom. And I actually have Volume 6, which I got at a really good deal at Comic Con for 50% off, so I missed Volume 5. Even though I haven't read anything about the series yet, I have heard great things about it and I think the books look amazing, I mean, even the spines, the covers and the art, look at this, look at this, it's beautiful, beautiful. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading that and uh, let's read the synopsis from Mal. Manji is an immortal swordsman who has been cursed with eternal life. He has grown tired of living with all the death he has created. He has no skills other than those of killing, thus he forms a plan to regain his mortality. He shall kill 100 evil men for each good one he has killed. The old witch who afflicted Manji with immortality agrees to Manji's proposition and Manji is set, to, is set on his path to kill 1000 evil men. On his journey he meets a young girl, Rin, who has her own vengeance to seek against the sword school whose members slaughtered Rin's family. Rin and Manji journey together, each hoping to find some kind of peace. In their way are many varied enemies, Rin and Manji are almost constantly under attack and must learn to live their lives avoiding being consumed by revenge. Now that sounds like an amazing story, it's kind of similar to Lone Wolf and Cub actually. In a sense, it's it's you know it's a fucking it's an old guy with a child, but it's see the similarity. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm looking really looking forward to reading this. Um, I'm probably going to start reading it after I finish Monster, which will be in two volumes. So yeah, there is Blade of the Immortal. Then we get to a manga which has been uh, requested by someone, and that comment got quite a bit of likes. And I actually wanted to pick it up myself as well, even though it's pretty expensive. And it's been long due. Vinland Saga, Volume 1. Here it is, by Makoto Yukimura. I really want to pick this up for quite some time. I actually uh, finished Season 1 uh, recently, uh, which is a prologue of the manga. Um, this volume actually covers the first four episodes. Uh, and uh, I think it looks beautiful. Here's the spine, here's the back, and here's how it looks on the inside. Beautiful. Oh, there we go. It looks pretty beautiful. So yeah, there is volume one. If you've been living under a rock, I'll tell you the synopsis. Here we go. Thorfinn, son of one of the Vikings' greatest warriors, is among the finest fighters in the merry band of mercenaries run by the cunning Astalad, an impressive feat for a person his age. However, Thorfinn is not part of the group for the plunder it entails. Instead, for having caused his family great tragedy, the boy has vowed to kill Astalad in a fair duel. Not just skilled enough to defeat him, but unable to abandon his vengeance, Thorfinn spends his boyhood with the mercenary crew, honing his skills at the battlefield among the war-loving Danes, where killing is just another pleasure of life. One day, when Astalad receives word that Danish Prince Knut has been taken hostage, he hatches an ambitious plot, one that will decide the next king of England and drastically alter the lives of Thorfinn, Knut and himself. Set in 11th century Europe, Vinland Saga tells a bloody epic in an era where violence, madness and injustice are inescapable, proving a paradise for the battle-crazed 
and utter hell for the rest who live in it. Now, that sounds amazing. And it is. Believe me. Pick up the manga. Seriously. Do it right now. So that's it for Villain Saga. Let's get to the last manga that I bought new. The rest is all secondhand. Uh, but yeah, this is the last manga I bought. And it is none other than Made in Abyss Volume 4. I've read up till Volume 3. And if you do not know about it yet, then please get to know it, because it's amazing. Alright? Look at this art. You can just call it art. You can't call it anything else. It's beautiful. It looks like it's a sketch. It's a water painting. It looks so good. Here's the spine. Here's the back. And let me tell you the synopsis. The Abyss, a hole of unprecedented depth. One young girl and a robot brave its dangers to find the truth. The town of Orth is a special one as it is built around the edges of the massive abyss, a wonder which has never been fully explored. Those who venture too far down never return, but those brave enough to traverse its territories are known as cave raiders and are heralded as legends. Within this town lives a young girl called Rico, a child of one of the most famous cave raiders of all time who disappeared on an expedition many years ago. One day, Rico's life changes when she meets a strange robot called Regu, who seems to appear from within the abyss. Believing this to be a sign of their mother stuck at the bottom of the abyss, Rico descends into the depths with Regu, ready to confront all the dangers within it. And that sounds amazing, doesn't it? Also a manga which I really do recommend. It's amazing. Amazing manga. I like it. So that was it for the new manga that I bought this month. Let's get to the second hand manga. Let's get started with the first seller that I bought manga from. I've actually never bought from this seller before. Um, and it's a lot of manga. So let's get right into it. Let's start with a series that I've been looking into. Picking up. And it's called Yotsuba. Now I've picked up quite a lot from this seller, so let's see what we, I got. It's part one. We have part two, part three, part four, part five, part six, part seven, part eight. Part 9, part 10, 11, and last but not least, part 12. Obviously it's not complete, but uh, yeah, it's uh, quite a bit of the manga. Here is how the spine looks. It's the same for every single one, except for the volume number and this picture, of course. Uh, here's the back. The cover, and here's how it looks from the inside. I think it looks very nice. I like it. With these books that I'm going to talk about now, I've actually never even opened before, so I'm not going to be able to tell about how much I like it or I don't, except for my first impressions. So here is the synopsis Yotsuba's daily life is full of adventure. She is energetic, curious, and a bit odd. Odd enough to be called strange by her father, as well as ignorant of many things that even a five-year-old should know. Because of this, the most ordinary experience can become an adventure for her. As the days progress, she makes new friends and shows those around her that every day can be enjoyable. It's a slice of life comedy story and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading it. It looks, sounds pretty cool. So yeah, this is the first story, the first manga that I picked up, that I picked up second hand. So let's get to number two. And let's go get to the second manga, which is Nana, which is the first shoujo manga I've ever picked up. Um, now, I have nothing against shoujo, but uh, yeah, most of the time there's a lot of romance, uh, which I do not really mind, but it's most of the time with uh, guys as well, which makes me cringe a little bit. Uh, but I actually picked this up because of uh, a video by the Anime Man. He talked about his favorite uh, musical drama manga or anime or whatever. 
And mine personally is Lyola in April, because that's the only one I've seen so far and I thought it was beautiful. And he said Beck and Nana were his favourite. So I wanted, really wanted to check this out. And when I saw this seller also had Nana for sale, not complete, but uh, quite a lot of it. Uh, I had to jump on it, because I love me my musical dramas. Let's get a look at volume 1 first. Here's the front. Here's the spine. And here's the back. And here's how it looks. Looks pretty nice. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now let's show you the other manga that I got, because this is not just volume 1. We also have volume 2. Have to look at that. Someone else appeared in the shot. Volume 3. Volume 4. Volume 5. Volume 6. Volume 7. Volume 8. Volume 9, which is quite a bit thicker compared to the rest. Volume 10, Volume 11, Volume 12, and Volume 13. Now let's talk about the synopsis, which is quite long. Nana Komatsu is a naive, unmotivated girl who spends her high school days chasing one crush after the other. Despite continually facing failure in her quest for love, her spirits have never dampened. At the age of 20, she finds herself on a train to Tokyo with hopes of reuniting with her current boyfriend. Nana Osaki, on the other hand, is feisty and prideful. After joining a local band during her high school days, she falls in love with music and one of the other and one of the band members. However, when faced with a choice between her relationship and her musical career, she chooses the latter and separates from her boyfriend. On her 20th birthday, she boards the same train to Tokyo, like a namesake, where she aims to become a top vocalist. The two girls with the same name but very different aspirations find themselves sitting together on their journey to the city and, as fate would have it, eventually share the same apartment. A deep and unique bond is then forged, where they will support each other in this saga of love, music, friendship and heartbreak. That sounds pretty interesting. So it's about two girls named Nana, and they both want to start their music career together because they end up in the same apartment. That sounds very interesting. So uh, I'm going to sort this out later. I need to find a spot for it as well. I'm probably going to have to double stack it <laughs> since I don't really have room anymore. But uh, yeah, that is it for Nana. Let's get to the third manga that I picked up. From also the same seller, which is Welcome to the NHK, which is complete. My first uh, manga from Tokyo Pop as well. Here's volume one. Here's the cover. Here is the spine. It is a little bit discolored, but you know, it is what it is. Hmm. Here's the back. And here's how it looks on the inside. <laughs> I like that. When you look at these faces, it gives me a bit of a Grand Blue Dreaming vibe. I like it. it looks like a comedy. Alright, now this is not all that I got, of course. So here's Volume 1. Volume 2. Volume 3. Stand up, please. Thank you. Volume 4. Volume 5. Uh, volume 6, Volume 7, and Volume 8. So it's complete. Now, here is the synopsis for Welcome to the NHK. Sato Tatsuhiro is a drug adult hikikomori, which means a Japanese shut-in, who thinks a sinister organization, NHK, stands for Nihon Hikikomori Kyokai, is the cause of all of his problems. He falls in love with the girl, Misaki, who he thinks is trying to assassinate him, but doesn't know how to talk to her or if he can trust her. The more he stays in his house watching anime porn, reading manga and doing drugs, the harder it is for him to leave. 
Only Misaki can keep him from rotting away in his own apartment. Seems like I got quite a bit of a comedy manga in this uh, hole. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I need me some comedy. I only have like brand, uh, Grand Blue Dreaming. As far as right now when it comes to comedy, which is an amazing manga. I really recommend it. It's great art, great comedy. But that's not from the hole now. It's not what I picked up today, so uh, let's talk about not talk about that now. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm glad there's uh, quite a bit of comedy here. Then we get to a manga which was actually um, recommended by a viewer. Uh, although I'm not sure if I can show this on camera because the cover is quite uh, interesting. Let's keep it at that. It is Sundome. Here's volume one. Uh, this is the cover, which I'm not sure if I'm, I can actually show. Here's the spine, here's the back, and here's how it looks, I hope I can show this, I am not. can't show that, I need to cut that out. Anyway, uh, yeah, I have uh, bought this because a comment recommended it to me, so uh, yeah, we'll see what it's about, it's apparently quite etchy. Oh. Already tell that from the covers. Actually, some of them are still in seal, like volume four, and volume six, because volume five is missing. I need to pick that up. Volume seven is in seal, and then we have volume eight, and it is finished, except for that volume five, which is missing. Uh, interesting covers, I suppose. Uh, half of them are uh, empty, almost. This one is uh, a bit covered, but yeah. So that that's it for Sundome. Let's say let's talk about the synopsis, which is short but sweet. Sundome is the story of an apathetic young man whose dull existence is forever changed when an assertive young woman wants to join the same after-school club in which he is a member. If only all after-school clubs were as hands-on as this. That is the entire synopsis. I still have no clue what this is about. Well, you can probably, when you look at the covers, you can think of some things, I suppose. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Well. I'll uh, probably read it soon. Uh, I'll pick up volume 5 to complete it. But, uh, yeah. Interesting, I suppose. The covers are very interesting. Let's keep it on that. Alright. So that's it for Sundome. Let's go to the fifth manga I brought from I bought from the same seller, which is actually I've shown this uh, I've shown this before today. It is the quintessential quintuplets volume two, volume three, volume four and five. There we go. The covers look amazing as usual. I have not actually read volume one yet as you as I already said before. But uh, I gotta say, it does look pretty cool. Again, a comedy. Obviously. Comedy size of life, just like Yotsuba. Uh, and I've already told you what it's about, so... Uh, you know, the video won't take as long. Great. And now we get to the last manga that I got from the same seller. Which is GTO, Great Teacher Onizuka Volume 1. Uh, this is actually a volume which was in the worst condition. Well, when it comes to the yellowing, the rest of it is not that damaged. Except for the spine, it's a little bit damaged. But uh, yeah, it's only volume one. But uh, this this uh, manga is pretty rare to get in singles, so uh, I guess I can get a taste for the manga. Let me read the synopsis to you. It's quite a long synopsis, but uh, here we go. Great teacher Onizuka follows the incredible, though often ridiculous, antics of the titular teacher as he attempts to outwit and win over the cunning class 3-4 that is determined to have him removed from the school. However, other obstacles present themselves throughout, including the frustrated, balding vice principal Hiroshi Uchiyamada, old enemies from his biker days, and his idiotic teaching methods. But Aikichi fights it all whilst trying to help his students romance fellow teacher Azusa Fuyutsuki and earn his self-proclaimed title. Here's how it looks on the inside. 
it looks pretty cool. Yeah, so that's it for the last manga that I got from the... This, remember, this is all from one seller, so uh, yeah. Thank you very much for watching part one of my manga haul of February. If this video gets 50 likes, I'll upload part two, which also has a lot of manga and even some light novels. So if you like this video, please like it and please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.